Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about this. This is the Ublox Neo 6M GPS module. Now, essentially, it's an, an evaluation board, uh, but what it does give you is the ability to get GPS data from the chip. Now, it works on um, UART, I guess it's serial to most of us. So you get an RX and a TX line, and you get a VCC and a ground. Now, you're only going to really need the TX. Uh, I'm going to be using an Arduino Uno for this, and I'm also going to be using a USB uh, to serial adapter. Now that's so that I can monitor what's coming in on this using the Ublox software, but also have it go through to my Arduino and monitor that on a separate COM port. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Uh, but they're really easy to use. I would definitely recommend picking one up. They're only about £10. Um, they work okay indoors. Uh, I'm just very close to a window and it does work. It picks up the position quite quickly and I even get a 3D fix. Um, but you will find that if you're uh, obscuring most of the sky, then they probably won't work very well. So we've just got it hooked up to one of these USB serial adapters and it's hooked up to RX and TX in this case because we want the uCenter software to be able to communicate with the module. And that's so it can reset it, do a hot start, cold start, that kind of thing. Uh, and we've got the module here on the breadboard along with the SIM 800L there. Uh, and we've got a black wire here coming from the TX of the uh, little uh, six, uh, the Neoblock 6M there. And that's coming down to an Uno, which is just here. So this is the U Center. This is where you can use the uh, software that Ubox provide to preview what's going on with your GPS module. Now this uh, bit of software, um, this is a video that you're looking at, well obviously, but of the U Center. Um, and it had been running for uh, five hours and, and it was, what, 6.42 at night. So I, I videoed this so that you could see what was happening. Uh, so it connected to various satellites, all the green ones are the ones it's tracking. And it, it means that you can see not only where you are in the world, there's some cool 3D world stuff that you can get, but you can also track it over time. So what you're seeing now is three hours worth of this tracking condensed into about 20 seconds. Uh, but I don't want to use the U-Center, I want to use my Arduino to pull out this data. Um, and the reason I showed this off is because I want to show what else you can do. So this is the bit of software that I've written for uh, Arduino so that you can pull out this um, NM, oh God, what is it? NMEA data. So it's the Nautical Marine, oh no, National Marine Engineering Association or something like that. You'll have to look it up. I'm not an expert on any of this. Um, so you get these strings that come out from most GPS modules and they're sort of standardized. Um, but there's one string that you can use if you just want to get quick latitude and longitude data and time and whatever. Um, and this one's the GPRMC and that's like minimum configuration or something like that. Uh, and so you'll see here we've got the time. So this one's an example string. This isn't one that's come out now. The time on this one is 18 minutes past 8 in the morning and 36 seconds. Um, and you can see it's an active connection. Uh, you can also see it's 37 degrees and 51.65 minutes uh, in the southern, southern hemisphere. That's what that big means there. And you can see that it's also 14, 145 degrees, I think. Um, and seven minutes and 36 seconds is that, I think. Um, or is it 7.36 minutes? I'm not quite sure, in the Eastern uh, Hemisphere. So we've got um, some other data here, which I'm not sure about, um, mainly because I didn't understand the terms. Uh, and we've got the date there as well. And then there's a checksum at the end. So one of them's a track angle, I think. It might be this one. So we can use this string to create data that we can throw into uh, Google Maps. Now you couldn't throw those strings in there right now, it wouldn't work. So Google Maps expects a different kind of string. So it won't expect um, whatever we've got there. In fact, we can try and copy and paste it in and we'll see where it takes us. But it certainly won't be uh, anywhere that I'll recognize on the globe and it might not even allow us to do it. So they couldn't find it. 
So what we need to do is convert that into something else. So an easy way of doing that is to pull up a calculator. We'll put the last one in, which was 1450736. Just find that again. So I know it's 145 degrees. And then the rest of this is the minutes. So we can get rid of what we've put in here, if I can. We can get rid of what we've put in here. And let's just bring up our notepad again. So I know it's 145 degrees and something or other minutes. So let's get rid of the 145. We don't need that. So we just need to put 07.36 in there and then divide it by 60. And then that will give us our decimal decimal figure that we need. So, and then we'll add our 145 back on. Oops. So that gives us 145.22. So that is our longitude. So we're gonna put 145.22 in there. And then let's figure out what our latitude would be. Uh, this isn't mine, <laughs> just in case you're wondering. So the last one is 37.51.65. So let's try that. 51.65 divided by 60 equals that plus 37 equals 37.86 and this should give us a place on the globe hopefully there we go um, I'm not sure where it's left us let's get rid of uh... I brought the notepad thing over here I hope I don't know whether you could have seen it so that's put a smack bang in the middle of an ocean and we're near Japan. Okay, so that's how you convert them. That's where that reading was from. Let's have a look at how we can convert stuff we're getting from the serial monitor. So if we pull up our code, you can see that we've got some stuff here for software serial. I'm not gonna go into that because it's kind of uh, explained in the tutorials that you can look at. And we've got a few labels here. This is just procedural stuff. We're gonna look at the sort of the real meat of it so you'll see here that we're pulling in some serial data from our GPS module, GPS read. Um, and if it finds this GPRMC bit, which was the bit we had here from the notepad, if you remember. So if it finds the start of the sentence we're looking for, then it's going to do a whole bunch of stuff and look at comparing it to things. So it will read that string until it finds a new line. And we know that when the, the information comes in, we get them on separate lines. So it's going to give us a new line. Uh, if it's a valid string. Uh, and so then we go through and we look and see if we can separate out this sentence. And each one of these sentences has variables uh, in there and they're separated out by a comma. And so what we're doing is if we find a comma, then we're going to separate out each one of the variables that we've got. And we're using that comma, tracking it like an index. So we're piecing it together bit by bit. So just going through. Uh, and once we've got those, I know what order they go in. And so even if it's blank data, we'll get a blank space in our array. Uh, but I know what order it is. So in the, uh, in the string, the third position is the latitude, and then the fourth one is longitude. So we're using a function called convert lat and convert lang. So we'll go down, ignore this bit about printing stuff out. That's just, that looks nice, but the actual code itself is the bit that's important. So we've got our convert latitude function here. We've got a string at the start that says pos neg, now this is because if you're in the southern hemisphere, then you need to have a negative value for your latitude. Um, but because we're pulling these things out, it doesn't actually tell you that, but it can have a, uh, a variable that's three in length for the degrees, or it can have one that's two. And we're pulling them out before a full stop. So we know that there's two before that, so we, we sort it out this way. So I'll show you. So in the four loop here, we're going through and we're looking for this full stop. Because those variables for the degrees can be two digits or three, um, we're not quite sure how many characters before that full stop uh, we've got. But we know we need to have two characters before that full stop for the minutes. So anything more than that, and we can hold those as degrees. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, we're keeping those degrees in a variable called lat first, which is a string that we've got. We don't need to convert that to a number. Um, we've got one called lat second, which is a float. 
Uh, and that's because we need to play around with it mathematically and divide it by 60. And because the number is 0. Point something 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 something, we need it to be a float because we need a little bit more accuracy with this one. So we divide our lat second by lat. Uh, we no sorry lat second equals lat second divided by 60, uh, and then. We go down here and we just throw it back into a string, adding on that posneg at the end. And then we return that string to uh, the thing that called the function. So we put it back into our array. And that's essentially how we do it. And so the data coming out looks like this. So this is live data right now. So the time is roughly quarter to eight here. Uh, so let's pause this so you can see it a bit better. So you'll see we're getting updates once a second. In fact, you can tell from the time here. So that says 7.54 and 19 seconds, and the next one says 7.54 and 20 seconds. We are pulling out at a one hertz rate, and you'll see that we're getting, um, that one says tied there, I'm not quite sure. I guess it's just came in as it was putting some data through. So we've got latitude, and there's our longitude. Um, now I do have, uh, a couple of extra digits there. They don't matter when you put it into Google uh, Maps, but we can do that now and it will show you where we are. Well, it'll almost show you where we are. It won't quite. So if I drop that in to there and then we pull up the other one, you can see my face there. And then we pull up the other one. And this should put me somewhere in Bradgate Park in Leicester. Now there we go. That's not where I live. I've just added some digits on um, in the program to make sure that it doesn't put me directly where my house is. Uh, but anyway, the code is going to be available in the description. You're welcome to it. You can also use something called the Tiny GPS library if you want. Well, hopefully that helped some of you guys out. If you've got any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, so feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks.